Hello everyone, this is Robert with Team Copperhead, and in this video I'm going to be going over the fight recap between Copperhead and Rusty in Season 5 of BattleBots in the Bounty Hunter series. There's going to be, of course, some spoilers in this video, so make sure you watch that full episode, come back, and we'll discuss the fight. So I'll be honest, this is one of the hardest fights I've had in my combat robot career. Not really from the nuts and bolts aspect of, you know, beating the opponent, but just simply the aura that surrounds Rusty. Rusty is an absolutely beloved robot and just won the hearts of everyone. You got to keep in mind that this was filmed during COVID. Um, there was no audience, so the only people there filming were the builders and the production crew. The status of Rusty being this underdog was there way before the television show even aired. Once it aired and the internet got hold of it, it just blew up to full-on Rusty mania. But when it was at BattleBots during filming, it was pretty much the same thing. Everyone cheered on Rusty and everyone booed anyone that went against Rusty. And you gotta understand that fighting against Rusty was different, but not all that different from fighting against someone like Tombstone or Endgame or Witch Doctor or anything like that. There was still that kind of hush that went over when you were announced to go against Rusty. And it wasn't that, oh, you're going to get, you know, exploded into a million pieces. It was just that you had to fight the underdog and you were going to be hated if you won. And everyone was going to be cheering on Rusty if Rusty won. So it was just kind of a lose-lose proposition. And that's why this is one of the most difficult fights I've ever had at BattleBots or Combat Robots in general. So when we learned that we were going up against Rusty, I volunteered, me and my wife volunteered to be the drivers for that fight. It was kind of, you know, a rotation that we had on the team. We were kind of next, and I thought, why not? If anything, it'll be good for the internet points and good for this recap. We were very surprised to be going against Rusty. We fully expected to be going against Kraken. Let's be honest, everyone thought Kraken was going to win that fight, um, probably including Rusty, and it was kind of a bit of a surprise to us. So at this point in time is when the anxiety kind of started kicking in because we had learned previously that Rusty had gone a full three minutes against Sawblaze and then it had beaten Kraken. And keep in mind, Kraken beat Witch Doctor and Kraken had a very close judge's decision against Black Dragon, or I think it lost to that judge's decision, but still. Kraken's a pretty serious bot and had gone up against some pretty serious people and done quite well. So we were really, really surprised when we heard that Rusty was going to be advancing through. And I started, you know, talking to the other builders. I hadn't watched any Rusty fights up until this moment. So we went out in the pits, kind of, you know, took a look at Rusty, look around, and I'll tell you this, as much as we want to believe that Rusty is just some bot that's, you know, built out in the shed, out in the middle of, you know, Midwest, Rusty's got some serious stuff under the hood. It is this huge beam, um, a huge square beam of steel. I think it was like three eighths inch thick. And then the upright, the frame is almost on the level of copper. It has a very sturdy frame. And we were quite frankly concerned about hitting just the frame dead on. It could maybe stop the weapon or cause some issues. So that was a little bit concerning to us. And the drive of Rusty is actually quite interesting. Even though it is a garage built bot, it is sporting a brushless drive with VESC ESCs. It's a pretty serious drive. It's very similar in a lot of ways to Copperhead drive. So, you know, it might seem like a farm built robot with a little popcorn head on top, but there's some interesting stuff under the hood. So upon learning that it went three minutes with Sawblaze, it beat out Kraken. I went to Matt Spurk of Kraken and kind of talked with him a little bit. And it turns out after their previous fight, they hadn't gone through their full checklist of assembling everything back together. They lost or didn't install a bunch of bolts and that was for that head assembly. So when they came together, that came off a lot easier than it should have. And that's kind of how that went. But all of that being said, we needed to make sure that everything was dialed in on the robot. Everything was tightened. We had thread locker on everything. We didn't want to leave anything to chance. The easiest way to lose against another robot is underestimating them and not preparing fully. So we wanted to treat this as if we were going against, you know, Tombstone or Endgame or anyone else. We wanted to make sure that we didn't make any stupid little mistakes that would cost us this fight. So let's talk briefly about strategy. Um, going into this fight, like I said, I was pretty nervous and 
I just wanted it to be over quickly. I just kind of wanted to take the pillow, put it over Rusty's head and just shh, 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 shh. I want it to be over nice and quickly and painlessly. Um, I knew that the frame would be a bit of an issue. Hitting the frame could be a bit of a problem because it's just a beefy, beefy frame. So the goal was to get around the side and hit the wheels. I know everyone says that. That is never, ever, ever my strategy, but in this case, that was the goal. Um, it had this tubular steel frame, as I said, but on the outside of that was the wheels and the tracks, and they had some relatively thin um, tubular steel with Lexon on the outside of that. One little bit of buckling into that would stop the drive side. So my goal going into this fight was actually to have the weapon a little bit slower so that we get more engagement. You know, we'd actually be able to hit them, get a little bit lower weapon speed and just kind of poke them at the sides and hope that that bound up the drive and then just back off. Well, that didn't go exactly as we planned. Rusty had the hammer in the front with a little air chisel, brought it down into the weapon and everyone gasps. If you watch the clip again, um, Zach is freaking out, my wife Kim is freaking out, and I'm just kind of like, ah, here we go. Um, I really wasn't that concerned about it. Um, I knew that my wife was operating the weapon and she tends to go a little bit conservative with the weapon. We had it, you know, probably 20, 30%. And instantly when that hammer arm came down, she just, boom, brought it back down to zero. So that is what ended up stopping the weapon is we just pulled it back as soon as we saw it's inside there. We know what the gap is inside between the weapon and the body, and it was enough for that chisel to just kind of fit in there. And we ended up shaving down that chisel quite a bit when it was inside there, turned the weapon off, went around. And at that moment, I told my wife, let's end this, put the weapon up as high as we can go, and we're just gonna try and hit the sides. And that's pretty much exactly what happened after that is I just carefully tried to get around to the side, got a couple decent hits on the side. Um, you can see the tread came off on one side. It kind of buckled it in and we just kind of destroyed one of those sides. Rusty was still able to self right, but the drive was just toast after that. So my goal was to try and be as delicate as possible, crush in those sides and just make sure it didn't drive anymore. Rusty is one of those rare designs that it isn't a four wheel drive vertical spinner, you know, the current meta of the time. It's not a tombstone. It's not even a copperhead. It's not a big scary drum. It just, that aspect of the bot doesn't matter. It's a bot that just kind of, I don't know, you root for the underdog and you feel good about it winning and you feel good about it just being there. Um, it is a bot that is more successful in that aspect than Copperhead will ever be in terms of being, you know, a really nasty drum spitter. There's just a lot of different ways to be a successful bot at BattleBots, and I think Rusty shows that. It doesn't really have to win fights to be successful. When it does, it's monumental in its success. So I want to kind of use this as an example that you can build whatever you want to build and enter it into BattleBots as long as you're passionate and you have some kind of reason behind it. I think having a theme goes much beyond just, you know, having a uniform and having some snakes and things like that. You can just kind of put your personality into the bot. And I think that's what's really amazing about all of the different bots that compete at BattleBots is each one really does kind of have a story and kind of have a theme and a message. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting. It was really good to see a bot like Rusty there this year. So anyway, that is my fight recap. I killed Rusty. Go comment down below. Um, we've got a couple more recaps coming, so uh, be sure to check out my channel for the rest of those recaps, and then I'll get back to my normal projects. So as always, thanks for watching. Check me out on Facebook for any updates to my channel, and see you in the next video.